At this camp in northern Nigeria, we've been told you can take your pick of orphan children. No paperwork, no questions asked. There is just one requirement, according to the man who claims to run the camp. You said on the phone that perhaps maybe there would be a suggested donation? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I told you. Behind us, children are playing, blissfully unaware. Over the phone, we'd said we wanted to inquire about what they're calling here fostering, how it works. Hello, how are you? Yeah, nice to meet you, sir. Thank you, thank you. He returns with his partner, keen to assure me there are children available. I could even choose girl or boy, younger or older. I wore a hidden camera to show just how easy it would be to procure a child. Has no. Give me assurance. A girl of three years. Any time from tomorrow. Yes. Any time from tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any document I need to sign or anything? No? Well, just the green light from Yes. The green light from you is enough. Yes, even verbal is working. Uh, Thank you, sir. They say they now need a chance to talk amongst themselves regarding what the suggested donation would be. And then they want us to call them. Here we go. All the talk that we just heard in that camp of suggested donations and fostering, none of that is legal. None of it is legal in any way, shape or form. For months now, there have been reports that children are being offered for sale in Nigeria's displaced camps. The worry is that anyone can walk in and walk out with a child. Even the very terror group they fled the camps to escape. The insecurity in the country's north is exacerbating what was already a struggle to protect this country's most vulnerable. The displaced, the orphaned, the desperately needy. It is now harder than ever to protect them. Respect life. Say no. You were a child once. The slogans etched across the mural at the Nigerian anti-trafficking agency, NAPTIP. As the insecurity in the north rages, it is almost impossible, they tell us, to keep track of all the orphaned, displaced children, scattered between official, unofficial camps and beyond. They know, though, where they can end up. What happens to the children that are trafficked? Some are trafficked for sexual exploitation. Some are trafficked for organ harvesting. Some are trafficked as uh, for child labor. There are concerns that some of these children in, in the Northeast could end up back in the hands of Boko Haram to be used as suicide bombers or to be used in their camps. Of course, it's possible. Because we have seen in, in Nigeria, just like in other countries that are having issues of security, where underage children are being used you know, as soldiers. And we also know that even here in recent times, with some of the suicide bombers being young children. Well, how much will you uh, be able to ring up for it? Well, you tell me. Back at our hotel, we make the call. It doesn't take long. You are the one that to and tell us that if I give it, is it too small or what? Uh, $200? <laughs> it's too small now. Huh? $300. All together, how much? He says the orphans' extended families will need a cut, and they all need to agree that the money is enough. Five hundred dollars for both children. Okay. Okay. Let me decide if we want to do this, and then I will call you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Five hundred dollars for two children. Two uh, orphaned, incredibly vulnerable children just sold off like that for $500. We didn't follow through with the transaction, but they kept calling us. The children in Nigeria's north bear the brunt of Boko Haram's campaign of terror. Mass abductions, enslavement, forced to flee their homes. And even here in the displaced camps, it seems there is no real refuge, no place the children can safely. Home. Nemal Bagar, CNN, Yola, Nigeria.